It's been a historic week for the continent of Africa and for the world as a whole. French troops finally withdrew from Mali after years of protests, after a so-called anti-terrorist operation which also ended up in the killing of a lot of civilians and after its credibility has completely been destroyed in the region. We'll be looking at all of this in this episode of Mapping Fault Lines. We are with us, Prabir Purkaisa. Prabir, so last week we talked about Afghanistan and the failed NATO war there and looks like we're back to another failed NATO or at least NATO members operation this time in the North of Africa. So we see that like, like I said, French troops have withdrawn from Mali. There's been a series of protests over the years, not just in Mali, but also in its neighboring countries, which are often known as the G5 countries, the Sahel region. French troops there from 2013 supposedly fighting against Islamist forces, but very, very unpopular. So could you maybe first take us through why the French troops first came in and more importantly, why were they so unpopular and forced to withdraw in such a disgraceful way? Well, you know, that's an important question for us to understand about the region itself. That this region is or was essentially Francophone Africa. So France, in its colonial role, might have withdrawn after the Algerian war and so on. But essentially still continued in different ways. And we have talked about it earlier that, for instance, the control still, the finances of these countries, the Francophone Africa has a number of countries whose so uh, essentially the currency is controlled by the Reserve Bank of France, the Central Bank of France. So that being what it is, it means that France had, has, has had an overwhelming presence in spite of the fact it is no longer in colonial possession in, in that sense of these countries. Having said that, this also is the consequence of the whole unraveling of this part of the world, and we can come to it later, from which is basically Libya. And you know the Mali intervention took place, the official French troops reaching there took place, when the Tuaregs, who were really bodyguards and part of the Libyan army, they, after the fall of Benghazi and Tripoli, they came over with arms, which they had because they're part of Gaddafi's forces, they came over and started their uh, campaign against the Mali government, trying to take over a part of Mali. And as you know, the ethnic divisions in all of these parts of Africa, as a consequence of how these uh, uh, colonial states were formed, essentially sitting down in the late 19th century and marking things right. on a map, that this is the, was the consequence of the fall of uh, Gaddafi. And then it opened, destabilized the whole region. And essentially, who gained out of it were a set, a set of uh, forces which are, at that point of time decided to align itself with the ISIS al-Qaeda forces. And that's because of the, what was happening in uh, the Arab world. That, that's where the ISIS al-Qaeda had strengthened. But these were local militias, they were local uh, uh, groups which were fighting. A lot of them came from uh, some of these aspirations of breaking away from what this originally the colonial state was, forming their own identities. And that's where you have this whole uh, growth of these forces aligning itself with certain regional or certain other ethnic identity groups. You know, Africa, whenever these things take place, the West calls it tribal wars. Now, when it takes place, for instance, in Europe, we don't call it tribal wars. For instance, when you have the Basques who have been fighting for their identity, both in France and in Spain, of course, we know the Spain was one much more. We don't call it tribal wars. But when it comes to Africa, all ethnic identities are consumed under this the notion of tribal wars. So you call this tribal wars that takes place in Africa. It fits in very nicely with the colonial view right. of Africa itself. So this is the unraveling of a lot of this post-colonial states. And Fra Francophone Africa, France really state. If you take the number of military interventions that have taken place with French troops in Africa, post the 50s, when officially uh, the French started leaving their colonies, you will see the, num the numbers are very large. And even today, this is the reason why when you talk about the unpopularity of France, it is because they are aligned to essentially post-colonial governments whose strings they still hold. And essentially, of course, the purse strings they still hold. So this is the other part of it. After all, you know, if you control the economy, 
people don't see you as their friend if right. the economy starts doing badly. The f French influence is weakening in these places. There is a lot more of nationalist forces which have come, which have been overthrown on occasions by France or uh, supported by France in the overthrow of various governments over there. We, uh, but you can see the dwindling of its uh, popularity or its credibility. But what we also see is the replacement of that by the United States. Mm -hmm. You are really looking at uh, the growth of American presence in this region. So as France weakens or withdraws, that vacuum might be filled by United States with exactly the same purpose again, that which forces to support internally, which military factions to support, which gov uh, president to support, and you, you will see the continuation perhaps of autocracies, this time backed by the United States more openly than by the French, or a combination of the French and the United States, because they're working really together in this region. The Mali example, of course, is the fact that they have been, as you said, local massacres. They have uh, also uh, been very unpopular because they've supported leaders who have been isolated from the masses. And therefore, there was a coup that took place a section of the military took over and they basically said, you know, Fr French troops, can you go? That we will be much better off without you. Not that they are Democrats either, but the point is that this, any outside force aligning with a local set of leaders does not earn credibility for the local leaders. And they now have gone to the Wagner group, for instance, uh, who they think will not play the same role or who do not have the same identity in the eyes of the people right. as ex-colonial power, uh, which is what France was. I think this is, the, uh, this is the change that we are likely to see. But let's not forget that it has two implications for the region, which is the French weakening and the United States replacing them. And the other part of it that what did the fall of Gaddafi, what impact did it have in Africa as well as the Mediterranean? Because when Gaddafi talks about it, he says, if I go, that these are the two regions which are going to be affected. And what he said has actually come true. That's a good thing you mentioned that, Prabir, because that is what I was coming to as well. Uh, the fall of Gaddafi is really some kind of a trigger moment for conflicts that take place across the region. You mentioned, of course, we're talking about the Sahel region, but also to the east maybe, also even to the south in countries in Africa. So why was this such an integral moment, so to speak? You know, one of the things that people do not understand about Gaddafi, that he had an enormous influence on the continent of Africa. The reason for that was that he was seen as a nationalist figure, that he was definitely an anti-colonial figure, that he fought for African Union to be the major uh, force in Africa. And if there are any conflicts there, African Union should be the one which should intervene and resolve it. And at that point, it was called the Organization of African Unity also. Yes. Name-wise too. Yes. And there, there also it's again important that any institution in Africa has generally been funded by the colonial or ex-colonial or imperialist powers. And they have, therefore, having bankrolled these organizations, also controlled them. This was an exception because Gaddafi used the fact that he had a lot of oil money. He used it to essentially bring the African Union that as an independent uh, power, that it had its own bureaucracy, it had its own institutional structure, and it was not dependent on the West. And Gaddafi's role, therefore, that anti-imperialist, or, or I will call it the non-aligned role, the uh, really the global South asserting itself, this in Africa, this was very important and Gaddafi played a key role because you will see other countries. And this is also interesting that all the other countries which threw up such leaders, most of them went out in coups engineered by the United States and its allies, so France and of course British. In this region, Thomas Sankara for instance in Burkina Faso. So Thomas Sankara, then Nkrumah in Ghana. Right. Okay, it's just a little below, but it's very much there. The figures who were really important was also in the non-aligned movement. Was Nkrumah was a very, very important figure on that. And of course, Julius Niare and others were there uh, who could not be displaced so easily. But if you take the 
Francophone Africa, this has been much more of an issue because Francophone Africa, the France really, France never really left. Right. So Gaddafi's fall was a re-emergence, they thought, of re-emergence of the uh, kind of power they held in Africa. And you can see it even today. African Union is no longer the body it is. It does, it's not able to intervene in most of these issues that are coming up. And that independent role of Afri African Union is not there. Mm -hmm. And actually, Gaddafi had warned uh, Tony Blair. They had a phone conversation because the West wanted Gaddafi to go. And they said, why don't you resign, hand over power and go? And Gaddafi had said, the, all the transcripts were there today because they were uh, given to a parliamentary, in the UK, a parliamentary committee. So he said that you don't understand what's going to happen. If I go, what you're supporting over here are not just any uh, uh, group. These are essentially allied to ISIS, Al-Qaeda forces. And what you're going to see, the rise of Islamic uh, fundamentalist or uh, sectarian groups over here, it will impact Africa, Northern Africa particularly, but it will also affect the Mediterranean. That's exactly what has happened after that. Of course, Europe played a, a, a played a you know, uh, major role in this because it was read by France and Britain with the tacit, implicit support of the United States. But the front-running forces were really uh, France and UK. If you remember, when NATO I intervened in Libya, they imposed what would be called, they called a uh, no-fly no zone. zone, which is something that they have been trying to impose in other countries also. But they have backed off given what the consequences have been in Libya and the United Nations Security Council realized, particularly Russia and China, this is a very dangerous thing. So they gave the right, essentially, of the uh, NATO forces to bomb whoever they wanted in Libya on the ground. And then the special forces were also there, who were not officially the army, but really were the uh, U.S., uh, France and British special uh, forces and they worked with the uh, so-called secessionist groups or the groups which wanted to be free of Gaddafi and as you know the consequences of what happened Gaddafi was uh, killed and of course the whole of Libya descended in anarchy. The biggest consequence of this was the huge amount of money and arms and ammunition which then uh, left Libya, both for Southern Africa, as we saw in Mali and other places, but also for Syria. If you remember, there's a whole rat line, which is well attested, which the United States and the ambassador was killed in uh, Benghazi uh, in, in, when he went. He was actually supervising a lot of the arms transfer which was taking place. And those arms all ended up with ISIS, Al-Qaeda affiliates in Syria. Right. So this whole region was opened out to these kind of forces. And uh, Libya's fall was really one of the, uh, is in fact a very key event in this. Prabir, you mentioned the Mediterranean, another key country which is right now also seeing a rise in conflict is Somalia, where uh, very recently we have seen two or three instances of attacks by Al-Shabaab militants who are associated, uh, reportedly associated with Al-Qaeda. And of course, Somalia, another old playground for the United States and its allies. They have uh, brought a huge amount of suffering, military operations. And yet we see that after all this time, Al-Qaeda seems to be very active. So what's happening there and how is it connected to the processes you're talking about? Both in Ethiopia and in uh, Somalia, the U.S. has intervened on sides, different sides at different points of time. Uh, Somalia is a particularly important example because if you take General Wesley Clark's uh, talk about books, book that he wrote, and also his television interviews, he said seven countries are going to be dismantled, essentially, that there will be coups, military operations that will take place, and seven countries, Iraq was, of course, the key one at that point of time, uh, but there were six others, and Somalia and Libya are the two uh, countries which also figure right. in that. If we look at the map, and you can see from the map, that this really are the two sides of the Mediterranean. So one is the Horn of Africa, which is where Somalia is, and the other is, of course, the gateway to the Mediterranean and the Atlantic. So that's where Libya is. So these are the two countries. You don't understand the significance of all of this unless you look at the map. That's why geostrategy becomes important. Geopolitics becomes so, so important. So Somalia 
Somalia was a target for them for that reason, that is strategically extremely important for them to control it. And they thought that if it goes into hands, like Islamic Court uh, Council, which was a lot of local groups which had established after the dissolution essentially of the Somalian state had got together and had established certain amount of jurisprudence within their uh, boundaries. And all of them had got together to form a coalition government which represented supposedly these forces. Yes, they were not, shall we say, on the Westminster pattern. They, were, uh, they had Islamic identities because they were enforcing, in the absence of a central government, they are enforcing, therefore, what they saw as a traditional law. And as you know, Somalia has a very large number of uh, Muslims, the majority of the country is that. And therefore, they sought their uh, uh, jurisprudence, not in a colonial jurisprudence, but in a traditional jurisprudence, therefore the name Islam. They had nothing to do with, at that point, with ISIS, Al-Qaeda. Some sections may have been there, but they were not uh, very strong. There's really small sections. And Americans, of course, used uh, Ethiopia, the Tigray uh, TPLF. for TPLF who was at that time a power in Ethiopia, actually also brought into power by them, uh, by the US and other forces. And they intervened militarily with, the, with Ethiopian forces to throw out the, the, this uh, Islamic court uh, government which was there which, as I said, was a coalition, and having got rid of them, they brought back the same warlords they fought earlier. If you remember Black Hawk Down, well, they're fighting against a warlord. The same bunch of warlords were brought back against the Islamic court regime that, that had come into being. And the consequence has been U.S. bombings, U.S. special operations over here, number of people killed and no Somalian state for the last 10-15 years and it still continues. So this is the consequence that what happened in Afghanistan, at least the Taliban came to power. What is happening now over here is nobody is in power. So there are some towns which are controlled by the so-called government in Somalia, but they don't control the country. And its consequences have been seen now in Kenya, it's also in Ethiopia. Ethiopia. So the consequences of an unstable country or a country which has no central uh, authority. And also the Somali pirates have become famous because the fishing has been destroyed over there and has been destroyed by European and other countries fishing in Somalian waters. So what you see as pirates are essentially ex-fishermen who can't fish anymore. So all of this is the again the consequence of the US finding enemies where they are not any and then converting those who are not its enemies into what they said are the uh, people they are fighting. So the relationship between Islamic fundamentalist forces, which is what uh, Al-Shabaab has grown into, what you also see developing in Mali, also see developing in other parts of Central Africa, all of this is really feeding into the anti-imperial, anti-colonial instincts of the people and finding who has the guns and who therefore is the best to align with. And I think these are the consequences that you're seeing. How it can be resolved is well if African Union strengthens itself, if the local forces can get together, if the imperial colonial forces decide that they should Lay, lay their hands off these regions instead of doing what they're doing in Somalia. The U.S. has just recently bombed again other groups, other players. And if we look at the map again, you'll see how many bombings they have carried out. We don't know how many special operations on the ground they've carried out. We do not know what CIA operations are there because they're supposed to be secret. They're not reported. At least the air operations we know. We at least some pictures are there, again acknowledged and unacknowledged. So if you see this, Somalia and Libya, the two classic examples where US intervention or imperial intervention, ex-colonial interventions have destroyed these countries. And more may follow unless, unless, as I said, the African countries get together and say, can, you get, can we get rid of you? And let's see how we can solve our own problems. Thank you so much, Prabir. Well, it's not in vain that they say that may the US, or in this case, its allies like France, not take an interest in your country's democracy and security. We'll be covering many such issues in future episodes of Mapping Fault Lines as well. Until then, keep watching NewsClick.